fans, uh, Bigfoot Explorer, here with Fernando, Fernando. and Scott. We are at uh, our Scout Mission 1. It's beautiful. What, you'd say it's like 60s? Early, low 60s. Low 60s, it's beautiful. 50% humidity. We are, uh, and it just rained too. Like what, Thursday, they had that big bane, uh, piece of uh, Hurricane Willa that came through. So all the roads are wet. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna check it out. Y'all stick with us, okay? Thanks. Uh, we have loose or tentative plans to meet up with one of our field agents, uh, Mr. Bo. And uh, he's either out here already bow hunting or maybe he's coming later to actually meet up with us. But he knows that we're going to be here around this time. All right, here's what we're talking about. It being nice and fresh. Notice this is a nice dip. Little valley in here. It's nice and wet. And we'll be looking for prints. Like right here, we got rabbit. Seeing perfect. Dog. Dog. <clears throat> yeah, we noticed that somebody's been back in here. So, oh, look, here's some good deer, tracks. good deer tracks. Perfect. How you can see them so perfect after a good rain. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, deer. Dude, and they will go into that thickest stuff, you hear? Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we are in uh, a pretty thick area here. Just checking some things out. One thing we notice is, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's quiet. I mean, real quiet. Not even many bird chirping. I mean, a few here and there, but not much. But check this stuff out. This is a old trail that they recently bush hogged to get to a little food plot to hunt. That's what this is. But it's thick. Real thick. Back here in the back is tore up with deer tracks. But there's definitely enough game in this area. Lots of game. This food plot. I don't know, it's been maybe about three, four weeks. And this was planted and it's just ripped up. There's definitely game here all over the place. Back and forth, coming in and out. Back through here, there's the trail right there. It looks like a trail right through there. And of course, all this has been knocked down though by the tractor that came in here to, to cut this plot out along the edges. All this yo pine and, and privet. So, the stuff on the edge, I would discount as being any type of squatchy activity. And we got a game cam right there. I'll have to ask Bo if that's his game cam. So guys, this is a perfect example of this thick area. Look at that little hole in there. It's nice and dark. Squatch could be just 
20, 30, 40, 50 feet through there and you still wouldn't see. Even if I zoom in, it's still dark, right? Well, here's the tool. I'm going to use some exposure compensation to lighten it up. So we noticed on the way back, you know, there's these deer tracks game trail. Talk about being thick. This is one of the areas that looks like you could actually kind of get back in here, huh? Amanda? Well, it's just nice. It's still plenty quiet. You get a little breeze once in a while, so some of the leaves are rustling. I notice a few tracks here and there, but it's not like a major highway. And it's always curious, like, how do these animals get through all this thick stuff like this? But they make their way, they pick their way through, and they weave their way through. And taking a couple steps back in there just to start noticing other things, like shapes of things, colors of things layers of things and it's just nice being out here being able to tune out all the city enough to start noticing these other things looks like it's kind of beat down some huh yeah somebody went back there and hacked away at some of that stuff but uh you know i'm not gonna go today and try to find exactly where that goes. it looks like you can go back it's the only spot back here where you can actually walk in yeah, it's thick, but still, you can walk in here. And then that's it. Weird. The trail. Oh yeah, I kind of see it. Kind of through here, and then kind of through there. You can kind of make out a slender path. And then when you get down. You get down, yeah. You can see it a little bit. And as it goes down, we're on like a ridge, and then yeah, there's a little bit of a bottom down. that way. Yeah. yeah. I see. And then we got something here, too. Way to get in. But it's thick. Always look up, too. Man, you smell that? Yeah. Well, it just happens to have this little tree falling over that backhoe or what have you ripped up and dropped. But, but we have like another little game trail to take a look at. And, uh, and again, just because it comes out this way, we don't know too much more than what we see. But um, it's definitely a trail though. Look like it goes right through here somewhere. Maybe it doesn't cross right over. Yeah, it could just go straight out, straight out to the uh, yeah. logging road. Yeah. In the use. All right, this is definitely another nice trail. I mean, it's been thick where we're at, but this is definitely pretty good trail here. Let's check this out. Game trail. It don't look much like this, but when you kneel down, you can definitely see it going back in. And it's one of the first places where you can see beyond a little bit. It goes back in there good. I don't know. We're looking for sign. We're looking for tracks, structure, tree breaks. This is the beginning of the area. Scout Mission 1 here in Mississippi. And uh, so far we've just seen a lot of active game, game tracks and trails. But uh, we're just beginning for today. So y'all stick with us. And so there's a podcast, and a podcast called Deer Hunting University. And the two hosts are Strickland, and the other fellow's name is Damaris. And they're from Mississippi, Mississippi 
extension service, etc., etc. And the podcast has done very well. So, recent episode highlights a study that Damaris had just recently presented, I believe, in New Orleans, at a quality deer map, deer deer management, management something convention, and it was topic and the deer whole management subject. assistance program dmap yeah. yeah yeah dmap and uh, the whole premise was to try to present this idea that they had actually tested so it was right for presentation on small scale burns and the prescribed burning prescribed burning but on a very much smaller, smaller scale, scale than most people are either thinking right. or considering and during the conversation. Like uh, in, like for brush management, in a wooded area or a open field or both for veg management? You know, they didn't specify per yeah. se like what would be the selection process, but they did test for areas where, this is all about deer, where, air, where it was in the middle of a forest and these now new wildlife burns would attract deer versus other areas that are much more conventional or mixed where you know you have agriculture and all kinds of other different uses or edges or whatnot and it still attracted deer there as well but the interesting thing is is that the scale of these burns are somewhere in a neighborhood of 30 acre yeah or less in yeah. terms of a plot yeah but the actual burn have is sense. only 30 yards well, and the section is 40, what, 40 square miles, sure. isn't it, right? Sure, Yeah. So ordinarily people are thinking about wildlife burns or controlled burns and all this other for forest or other wildlife management, managing right, right. the quail. But this and is strictly for wildlife management in like smaller plots. But on a smaller woodlands. plot and on a much smaller scale. Right. To include only something as much, much as you could understand under a, you know, sort of the reach of a bow shot. So using wildlife uh, observation and trail cams and all the other, they determined that they have about a 13 times increase of frequency of use. Wow. Based on just a small 30 yard circular Radius area burned. that they control for using handy little tools like a rake. Drip torch. Drip torch, uh, you know, whatever other spades yeah. and stuff. and right. a, and a and a backpack blower. Yeah. So sweet. The idea was to try to encourage landowners and other to think about burning as a management tool without getting all into it in terms of expense right. and overhead and logistics and complexity. Tractor, bush hog, yeah. people coordinating, walking the fire line. Yeah, that's a smaller so control. You know, as amusing is all this would be for a deer hunter and i think it's very doable but yeah more game equals what there you go possibility of let's what? just say it squatch more creatures more creatures that would be in the area for more game that's right right so that's the little that's a little morning chat that we those are the things that we start thinking about yeah we're hunters too but now we're bringing some of this insight into well hey we're not the only hunters out there looking for game now. So, management practices for wildlife game practical are still. Wildlife management practices are still pertinent to this squatch stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's pertinent in ways that we're just, right now, just only brainstorming and playing around with. And look, you're smiling, I'm smiling. <laughs> but there's a lot of overlap here. And uh, so much of this is making a lot of rational sense. Yep. And so much of this is really intriguing. And before too long, so much of this, we're going to actually maybe try to go test. Right. Which that's, I think would really be cool. That's the deal, the tests. It's coming, folks. <laughs> Hang in there, the tests are coming. Yes. It looks like a loom right here. It's kind of broke up high. Don't know. No, I think it just flopped. Look. It could have just flopped. There's no real deer trail there, but oh, it's just the limb itself. There's no tree attached. Yeah, 
no no vertical. I don't think we Stancy. should be reading too much into this. Yeah, not this one. Yeah, no. No. Not that one. So it got broken off and it got There it is. Here. There's the tree. Look, it's right there. You see it? See it? Yeah. Okay. So, so okay. that's where it came from. That's and cool. that's really high though. How high do you think that is? I can't really see it good. And then there's the limb. Oh yeah. So, you know, better than two meters and yeah, just hey, swap right Hey, down. imperial units, not meters. Uh, it How looks like that? it's uh, 14 feet high to the stump. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meters. All right, work. All right, onward. This is the U.S. still. So we got coons. We, we got coons. We do have coons. And he's going back that way. Yeah. yeah. You know what that was? That was originally what's called a, what we call in the forestry realms as a wing ditch this thing yeah. yep it's, it's going up right here it's yeah. going up this grade now they need to take all that yeah. and move that out the way so when the water comes down this hill yeah, it has a place to home. go and gets diverted down there yeah. all this do all this is going to do is promote uh, erosion of this road <sighs> Wing ditching? This is that area. Is this the area where that pond is? It is. I thought it would have more water in it. I, th I thought it was up here a little bit, though. I don't know. I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. So, so much of the leaf litter is now on the ground that was still hanging on the trees last time we came. And so we can see about another, you know, 30 yards or so into the forest when when it's relatively open as opposed to like like still summer heavy leaf on summer you can't see your hand in front yeah. of your face and... yeah, it's a pretty good sized coon man it's a fat one yeah it's a fat one heavy yeah we are shedding the clothes it's it's getting hot so I've had to take off my gear. Take a little break. We're meeting Bo out here. This is our rendezvous area up at what we call the logging deck area. So, I'm gonna take a little bit of break, get a little water. Fernando's checking out the scene at the logging deck because they're still, I hate that they're logging this area while we're doing research here, but the only reason why they're not out here today either is because it's the weekend, and usually on the weekend they have a quota to meet, and they'll work the weekend, but since they're not here, either they're not in a rush, or it's too wet to get down that road to, which that's what I think it is. It's way too wet. We'll be back, um, but, uh, with all that rain. Look how lovely it is. It's just lovely. Sliding loveliness. It's just beautiful. So, somebody's chatting me up. We're fixing to hit what we call the log deck area. We did this spot here before. You may have seen it in some photos. But the actual logs are gone. Looks like during the week they were here, probably before Thursday in that big rain. But uh, we're fixing, we still got some skitters. I don't know if the loader's here or the cutter, but uh, this is interesting too as well. Right here, we have what's called wild turkey scat. That's right there. And when you see that right there, it somewhat looks straight, but if I did a vertical shot over it, it'll be a little bit of a comma or a J shape. Now with wild turkeys you have a J shape or straight it's a male if it looks like if it looks like popcorn it's a hen so that right there is a male male turkey scat more squatch food wild turkey we uh I'm packing up getting all this lovely gear on and I just heard I don't know if it was a knock the first one sounded like a knock and then the second one was louder and 
sounded more like like a metal like hitting metal or something I don't know we just heard it this way maybe about a hundred yards away not too far away I wish it would go off again and honestly I don't know if it's somebody working on something the first one sounded more like a knock the second one was more like a metals hitting metal I don't know. but I am alone right now my friend is off doing his research we're gonna go meet up that's right, right. that's a logging operation right there my friend there's your skitter that pulls the trees up to the deck right there there's your loader skitter will bring those over there They'll put the logs right on the side. He'll pick those up. He'll delimb them, looks like. And then they'll place them on side the uh, flatbed, flatbed trailers for the trucks to haul out. This right here is your feller buncher, otherwise known as the cutter. Very small operation. One cutter, one skitter, and a loader. Which, that's all you really need to be effective. That oak tree right there is where I had a stand. I was sitting in there about 15 foot off the ground and it was about 4.45 in the afternoon and that's when I started hearing all the whistling. It started off back there about 40 yards in the brush. Then it, another one started whistling over here. Then out there in the cutover and before I knew it, it was whistling just all around me. At least 20, 25 different. Now, how would you describe the whistling? Was it like a... It was a flutter. Oh, no, it was a fluttering? It was like a fluttering. Just like, brrr, brrr, kind of like that. And was it daylight exactly. savings time when it was starting to get dark? Or was it still light a good bit? No, this was uh, about mid-November. So, it, it was starting it was starting to get dark but it was not you know, I, and, I had plenty of lights too and Wait. it wasn't anything you've heard before i've heard it before but there's not not that many of them but yeah. you said november so it's not a songbird no because they are dunk no it, no 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 it wasn't a, no uh, and it wasn't like a whippoorwill no i know because they whipped it yeah, was too. not a whippoorwill it was it was something different I don't know what it was. But and that's that's all I can think of that would have like a trill sort of call yeah. to it. Yeah, and I mean, I've heard foxes make some weird sounds, but this was not foxes. And some folks said screech owl. No, it wasn't a screech owl. I know exactly what a screech owl. They'll scream and scare the hell out of you. It wasn't a screech owl. Dude, but this and is a, go of course, things were a lot different. When you heard all those owls, were there more forested area here? Or was it still low like this cut? Out here was cut more. Out there was cut more. Because it had been kind of fresh. Wasn't as thick. No, it wasn't nowhere near as thick. You can see a lot of those hills and hollows out there. So those so those sounds you were hearing were probably over by those trees. That tree line? Or was it Some closer? were, but some were right behind me. Some were right see, behind Because see, I was in that oak tree right there. Yeah. And some were. So that's. Right that's, back here and back that away. You win a climber? Yes. Deer hunting, huh? Yep. It was in that tree. And, and they just all started going time. off. Until about, until about an hour after dark, just listening. Yeah. That's... So you weren't alarmed? A little bit, because I'd never heard nothing like that before. But alarmed. Not, not that many of them. Who, what right. year was this? 
This was last year. It was last year? Yeah. Okay. 2017. Hmm. But I mean, you weren't alarmed that I need to get out of here. Yeah, you never had I mean, any... I had a gun with me, and I'm not really... Yeah, but did you think... Did your mind wander any other place than some sort of known wildlife? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was different. It was... And there was not so many, uh, so many different... I mean, it was... It was the same kind of call, but it was so many of them, so many different ones, and they were all around me. That kind of had me uh -huh. kind of iffy, you know. Cause so when so many... you left, did you hike out when it was dark? Oh, yeah, I walked all the way out. My truck was parked back at the road. Yeah. That's, I didn't have a Nothing happened order. on the way out? No sounds, no... The whistling kept, and it, and it followed me to about, you know, 100 yards, maybe 50 to 100 yards out of here. Down then, that trail? Yeah. Yeah. And then it just quit. All just quit. quit. Heard, and they all stopped at one time, and it didn't start back again. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty. That's all right. We're walking this part here, and uh, we want some input from you. What y'all think a lot of these bent-over trees are? Is it natural, or is it something else? Let's see. We're shooting into the sun. This is where I see it pretty good. And there was a lot more bent over trees, but I cut them down so I could get back here without running into trees. To be honest, I think it's the hardwoods competing for sunlight with the pines and just trying to bend out. But yeah, it's a natural canopy. It could be. That's what I think. Cause that competition, those pines grow way faster than the hardwoods. They're gonna jut out where that sun is. Well, I'm too curious because. You know, being a geographer and everything, I got the background and all of that. How much of your family is actually Cherokee, and how did you come to learn about it? Well, ever since I was born, on my mother's side, I always knew there was a whole lot of Cherokee, because my great-grandmother, my great-great-grandmother came right. from North Carolina, right. around Cherokee, North Carolina, in uh -huh. the Smoky Mountains. She came down here to college. And that's where, that's where it all started from. And on my dad's side, I know there's some Cherokee and some Choctaw, but I don't know a whole lot about it. Mm -hmm. But on my mom's side, it's full-blooded Cherokee, as far as I can remember. Mm -hmm. 